main codes of conventions of a punk rock music video, or at least a rock music video as well, uh, tend to be things like dark colours, so both in the video and the clothing. There tend to be lots of blacks, reds, browns, that kind of thing. Um, they usually have a very hectic style of video, so there's a lot of stuff going on, you know, like flashing lights, or there's a lot of people playing guitars quite vigorously, there's smoke going on, there's a lot to focus on in the video. Um, the editing style tends to be very fast paced, just to speed up the general feel of the video as a whole. Uh, the clothing they wear is usually ripped or like got studs on it, made out of leather and denim, and as previously mentioned, also dark coloured. Um, and yeah, I think with my video it went pretty well. I managed to get a very similar style of editing, you know, I got very fast paced editing um, in some shots. I got I tried to f include as many hectic scenes as possible, um, you know, a lot of flashing lights and smoke and stuff like that. Uh, the clothing as well, I tried to get as fitting as possible. Um, however, in some shots there are people wearing clothes that aren't necessarily what would be considered rock or punk rock and this was just a bad bit of planning on my behalf. Um, the colour scheme I think I managed to get right. In a lot of the chorus shots there's a lot of red and black which of course fits with the colour scheme of this genre. And uh, finally the final shot I think is really fitting within this genre because it uh, is quite a famous style of shot, it's used a lot in these kind of videos where somebody places their hand over the lens of the camera or acts like they're punching it. It's quite a sort of hardcore metal thing to do in a music video. Um, I think there are a couple of aspects that didn't go well. Some of it includes like long shots, there are a few long shots in my video. Um, however, these were mainly used to show narrative. So for instance, there's one long shot of the female protagonist where she's acting around and then she proceeds to smile. And um, this is just to try and include her as much as possible and really give the audience a feel of who she is and why she belongs in the video. Um, I've also got more than one band, which is, as you can probably tell, not conventional for a video, as there are loads of different, uh, well, loads of different ways in which you can film it. However, I've never seen a band do it with more than one band. Again, this is narrative-based, so I have the lone guitarist uh, being split from the band in the same way that the protagonist is split from the female protagonist. Um, and finally, there is a lack of narrative in the pro in the planning stages. I storyboarded out an entire plan for the film and got it all ready and everything. However, when it came to shooting, due to a number of reasons, I couldn't fill out the entire story. And so there is a fair amount of narrative, but there's also some lacking. So that's why it can be confusing in a few places. Um, the general codes and conventions of like an advert and a digipack are different. They've got usually a bold colour scheme uh, that features black and some kind of bright colour to make it stand out more. They both use like a bold artistic title font uh, to draw as much attention to the name of the band as possible. Uh, they both usually have one picture or bit of art on the front um, just to capture people's attention, to give them something to look at and actually it gives a chance for the band to express who they are and what they're about in one single image. Um, the advert has a lot of info text on it, well a lot uh, for readers, so it's describing when they're playing, where they're playing, this kind of thing, and it's usually in a very simplistic text uh, so that people can read it easy. Um, the digipack, uh, something they often feature which isn't featured on an advert, is a logo. So the logo is just to allow the audience to recognise which band they're you know, looking at and watching without having to necessarily watch the videos or read into an article and things like that. Um, and this, this is usually featured on the front cover and on the spine as well, just because they're good locations and you know, some of the main areas where people are going to be looking. Um, I feel that the pink and black colour fade, it went well in this thing. I think the colours are bold enough and dark enough to work together and I think that the way they fade into one another works really well in my advantage. Um, I think the font I got pretty much spot on. The uh, the font is very sort of gothic-y and American punk rock styled, similar to Three Days Grace, which is the band that I followed and did the song for. Um, the logo uh, the logo is Three, Day, Three Days Grace's logo, however it's just adjusted to fit my colour scheme, so it's more of a purpley pink, whereas theirs is either black or red usually. Um, I think the picture on the front of both the advert and the digipack, I think it was quite effective. It was just a shot of the guitarist from the music video, 
Um, however, I've just inverted it and put it into negative, and I think it's given it that nice sort of edgy touch that isn't too over the top, but I think it fits well within A, the genre, and I think B, it works well as an art piece because it's not too distracting. Um, and the industrial artwork on the inside of the digipack I think is a big part for me because the inside of a digipack is only there to hold the CD and the information about the CD but once those two have been taken out, you know, if you wanted to read the information or play the CD it's very difficult to just look at the inside of this cover and think, oh wow, that's amazing um, what you'd want to do instead is create something that's not too over the top so it doesn't detract from the front cover like I did, I put in a steel texture behind the pink and black fade and it just made for a slightly more appealing inside cover make it less bland and less boring, but not too over the top um, finally, I think the pink and black fade actually worked to a disadvantage in some effect as well because the colour scheme for the video is typically, you know red and black and I feel like that's the main colour scheme for a lot of the chorus shots and the video as a whole and actually for the genre I found from Foo Fighters, ACDC, Red Hot Chili Peppers, people like them all of their posters and t-shirts and artwork and things like that they usually feature a red and black colour scheme so I think it's just a commonly used colour scheme in this genre um, but yeah I think pink and black works well just not as well as red and black however I wanted to do it pink and black because Three Days Grace often feature pink and black in their uh, cover art and their pictures and all the things like that and so I didn't want to detract from the band too much. Um, there is a bit of, uh, ish of an issue with the colour fade direction on the advert and the digipack. On the digipack it fades from black to pink to pink to black whereas on the advert it just fades from pink to black vertically rather than horizontally and this doesn't match which bothered me slightly however I think it works well with the digipack because once it's opened up as a full piece you can see the nice fade and that transitions well and with the advert the pink is obviously the boldest colour and so the pink is at the top of the page and it draws as much attention to the picture who is obviously one of the band members and it also draws attention to the name of the band which is really handy because that's where people need to be looking and finally, there's a bit of rush photoshopping on the advert. The original picture had the model's head cut out of it, or at least the top half of the model's head cut out of it. Um, and so I've had to edit in the head. Um, and the edges of it look almost indistinguishable now. It's difficult to tell that it's been roughly photoshopped. However, if you look carefully, you can see little marks and little giveaways that it's been edited.